Hi, welcome everyone. Today I'm joined by the CEO of Matinas Biopharma, Jerry Jabor. Matinas is an emerging clinical stage biopharma company based in New Jersey. Jerry, thanks for being here. How are you? Good, Mike. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. Really excited to chat with you guys. You describe yourself as a clinical stage biopharma company focused on redefining the intracellular delivery of nucleic acids and small molecules with its lipid nanocrystal or LNC platform. So tell us a little bit more about Matinas. Can you explain that LNC platform? What makes it work so well? What makes it unique? Sure. I mean, that mission statement's a mouthful, but we really are focused on redefining intracellular delivery. And, and that's really... Uh, having the ability to encapsulate medicines in, in a in a certain sort of particle, and be able to ensure that it's protected once it enters the body, and then can gain access to cells in a way which sort of doesn't generate an immune response without any toxicity, allowing the cargo within these particles to do their intended job with, within a cell. And so for us, it begins with a platform delivery technology. We, we call it LNC, um, which is lipid nanocrystal. And it's essentially a very simple combination of phosphatidylserine and, and calcium. And there's really four main buckets, I think, which separate our delivery technology from really anything that's being used uh, today in the marketplace. And I, and I think it begins with improved stability. Um, we have the ability to create solid, stable particles. And that gives our technology an advantage in getting or gaining oral bioavailability. So in other words, some, a lot of the delivery technologies today, you have to use intravenously. They have to be injected um, into a patient because they can't survive their contents can't survive the conditions in the gastrointestinal tract. So we can create solid, stable particles. We can trap drug and molecules inside our lipid nanocrystals. And that does a couple of things. It protects certainly the body from the drug, but it also protects vulnerable and sensitive cargo from the conditions within the body too. So that's really the first pillar that improved stability. And we can do it uh, and have the capability to carry very large payloads. We bring improved safety, both because we're protecting the body from molecules and, and molecules from the body, but also how we interact with cells allows us to avoid a lot of the toxicity or the immune response that you see with other delivery technologies. And we're proving that premise first in small molecules. So we're taking older molecules, some IV only highly toxic molecules, and we're able now to give them the ability to be given orally, safely, we're removing the toxicity from those drugs. And we focused initially on the anti-infective space, but really the future for our technology is much broader than simply taking small molecules and anti-infectives. And that's really going to um, become evident over the course of 2022. Outstanding. No, there's a lot more to be done there. We're excited to watch that happen. Now, of course, Bettina says ongoing collaborations with multiple different companies, including Gilead, for the application of that LNC platform. Could you give us a quick overview of these projects and the latest developments going on there? Yeah, as I mentioned, I mean, this is a platform delivery, which means we think it can be used to deliver a variety of molecules. And so we are driving our own products forward. But one of the ways we think it's smart to expand the utilization of our technology is through collaborations with well-respected pharmaceutical companies. And, and two of them that we're very excited about is our work with Genentech, um, and then our work with the NIH and Gilead on a drug called remdesivir. And, and let me just give you a, a little update on both of those. So our relationship with Genentech is one that's been around for almost two years now, and they just recently extended that relationship for another year. The original mandate there was for us to work with Genentech on up to three proprietary Genentech compounds, formulate those um, within our LNC platform technology, and then provide them to Genentech to conduct in vitro um, and in vivo preclinical studies. And we've done two out of the three there. And again, demonstrating the viability of our platform. Genentech is now, because of the success with the first two compounds, taking a close look at that third compound, which we expect they will um, unveil to us here in the next month or so. And then we'll begin formulation work on that again to allow Genentech to do some preclinical testing. But it's a great way for us to sort of advance our technology, 
without having to give a license to our technology yet, expand proof of concept and really allow um, a company like Genentech and Roche to get more familiar with our technology and how they may think about uh, more broadly applying it within their own organization. And then alongside that, you know, we're all obviously still living um, with COVID-19 and its impact on our lives. And the need for uh, antiviral therapy has really never been stronger. And one of the only drugs that was approved um, as a treatment for COVID-19 was Gilead's remdesivir, which is an, an antiviral drug, which is administered uh, again via IV because it, it cannot survive the harsh conditions of the GI. So the NIH came to us and asked us to work alongside Gilead to try to come up with an oral formulation. There's no question that the ability to give an antiviral orally could be a game changer in the fight against COVID-19, but really more broadly, can we have a, an impact in, in treating viral infections of a lot of different uh, types? And our technology, we think, can become a solution for that. So during 2021, we worked and formulated um, a variety of formulations of remdesivir. We went both through in vitro and in vivo studies with our technology, both again, which demonstrated our ability to deliver um, these molecules intracellularly. And in the in vivo study with our LNC remdesivir, we showed the ability to knock down viral titers um, generally similar to the way remdesivir works and, and yet we're doing it orally. So the NIH was excited about that. Um, they want us to do another pre series of preclinical studies with our LNC formulation and a little bit different model of COVID-19. And we expect that work to get underway, you know, here in the first quarter of 2022. So slowly but surely really expanding the application of our technology, Mike, and, and really building relationships with some, with some highly respected companies. Terrific. Okay, all that being taken into account, it's clear that it sounds like 2022 is going to be a big year for Matinas. Can you summarize and highlight some of the key milestones we should be looking for upcoming this year? Yeah, it's, there's no question. And I've said it both on investor calls and I say it to our organization all the time. Um, this is the most important year in the history of Matinas. In addition to driving MAT 2203 forward, where we've already enrolled you know, almost 10 patients in cohort four of an act, we'll see data, additional data from an act you know, early in the second half of 2022. We have a, another product, internal product, which we haven't even had the opportunity to talk about in this meeting today, where we have the first oral aminoglycoside called MAT2501. It's used to treat um, deadly bacterial infections. We have that um, in a currently in a phase one study. We expect to see data from that study in the first half of 2022. We expect to see additional data from Genentech and from Gilead during the course of this year as well. And because there is so much interest um, in the delivery of nucleic acids, messenger RNA has gotten a lot of attention. We know DNA plasmids um, we think can have an important therapeutic impact. Things like CRISPR, all of these technologies share one common challenge. And that's an ability to effectively get these molecules inside a cell so that they can have their genetic impact. And, and affect that therapeutic result. And so we're also in discussions with a number of parties about our unique ability um, to be differentiated from what these companies are using today. Imperfect solutions that they're using, we think that our LNC platform can be used to deliver things like messenger RNA, potentially CRISPR, because we don't have payload limitations like some of these other technologies. And we're intent on getting to proof of concept in that nucleic acid area during 2022 as well. So there's going to be a lot to follow, a lot of boxes to check. Um, and we're really excited about our prospects here, but also about being able to continue to update you and the market generally on, on all the great things that we have going on here at Matinas. Awesome. Well, wonderful update there. Certainly looking forward to seeing what comes next in 2022. You guys have some really impressive track records and a lot more to come. Jerry Jabor, CEO, thank you so much for being here. Mike, thanks again.